السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وبعد ما دي برضو سيستس الحمد لله we are in coming to the end of this year 2020 and I thought let me share some thoughts with you about what happened in this year and then about what we think we should do and what are the key things to focus on in the year coming ahead of us which is 2021. So let me begin by uh, making this dua and wishing all of you a beautiful 2021 inshallah a year that is free from tests of every kind inshallah a year that is full of good health a year that is full of prosperity, a year that is, uh, that will be evidence that we learnt from what we faced in this year 2020. Just this morning somebody sent me a little slogan which said that my message to those who are working from home is be thankful that you have a home and be thankful that you have work. And I would say, I want to add a third one to that, and which is that be thankful that you do not have COVID. Um, so let's go to where uh, a quick, brief glimpse of the year that went past, which is 2020. So I'm looking at from, say, uh, December 2019 to December 2020. I just picked uh, what I consider to be important events, uh, you might add to that as you like. Um, it began with the, um, with the Australian bushfires, which burned an area which is uh, equal to, in American terms, the whole state of South Dakota, and killed over a billion animals. And that's an estimate. I mean, nobody actually counted the number of killed. Uh, many of them would just have been burnt to cinders without any evidence of them even having been there. So the number of animals killed in the Australian bushfires is in excess of 1 billion. And then, of course, in, on January 9, WHO announced formally uh, the thing that has been occupying us for the whole year, which is <coughs> COVID-19, the global as a global pandemic. Uh, I arrived in the United States in September of 2019, and I um, think to myself that as I walked out of Boston airport, if somebody had come to me and said that in three months from now, uh, there will be no planes in the air, people will not be able to go to work, uh, companies, businesses will shut down, countries will lock down, um, you will not be allowed to leave your, your home, uh, churches, synagogues, temples, masajid, everything will be shut down, including there will be no Umrah, uh, and even when Hajj time comes, Hajj will be uh, very restricted under strict uh, supervision for uh, health and safety. Uh, the whole of Ramadan is going to go by without Taraweeh, without Qiyamul Layl. Uh, if, people had, if somebody had told me all of this, I would have told him, look, I think you need to seek medical assistance because look, it looks like you are uh, in a severe case of dementia. You are insane. Uh, because none of this is possible. I mean, definitely all of these together are not possible. Today, we know that every single one of these and a lot more actually happened. So COVID-19. Number three, in here in America, and also I think for those basketball lovers, Kobe Bryant and his daughter, Gianna, they died in a helicopter crash with seven people. Kobe Bryant was a big name. Uh, he was a very decent human being and a big role model for a lot of youth. Uh, in this country and for people who uh, watch basketball. Number four, stock market crashed thanks to the global lockdowns. Um, lots and lots of people lost their jobs. Entire methodology of working got changed. Two things, work from home and homeschooling, both of which were at best uh, perks. For some people, for some people, they were uh, curiosities. Both of these became factual, both of these became very real, and that continues. 
uh, what that did to, for example, work from home, what that did to the real estate industry, what that did to the maintenance industry, what that did to office maintenance people, all of which were not billionaires, uh, is another story. Uh, what this whole lockdown thing did to the airlines, did to hotels, restaurants, uh, tourist destinations, all of that is another story. Number five, the good side of this, the ozone layer got fixed. The, 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 the uh, tear in the ozone layer, which was subjecting the earth to huge electromagnetic uh, uh, and, and, and uh, uh, radiation, um, that got fixed. Um, the seas got cleaner, the atmosphere got cleaner, um, the rivers got cleaner. Uh, and then we had George Floyd. I cannot breathe. Black Lives Matter protests all over the United States. And the way that happened of how people came out and took part in it because the uh, the people who participated and who stood up against racism were not only the black people, they were the white people stood up, everybody stood up uh, and people uh, came out on the streets and they fought that and we hope that this will result in something permanent and something permanently good as far as fighting racism across the world, fighting, fighting fascism across the world, uh, fighting religious extremism across the world, uh, fighting communalism acro across the world. I am really and sincerely hoping that this uh, Black Lives Matter protests uh, will uh, create uh, positive ripples in all of these areas. Um, and then there was the U.S. presidential election. I don't know if I should say uh, there was the uh, U.S. Uh, presidential election or I should say the U.S. presidential election still continues because there are a lot of people who believe it's still not over. Uh, there are a lot of people who believe that, uh, you know, it's... Uh, anyway, uh, it, we have uh, roughly two weeks to go uh, or a little bit more than two weeks to go before that is decided finally once and for all, but uh, it's certainly giving uh, a lot of uh, uh, good TRP ratings to uh, news channels. And the last one, which again is a, is a bit of a uh, good news, I think, is the COVID-19 vaccine rollout. Um, I think that's uh, genuinely good news. And uh, we hope that this will result in us seeing some light of day at the end of the tunnel. So all of this is, uh, is what we faced. Now, what did we get out of this? What could we have got out of this? What should we have got out of this? I think the first thing that we could and should have got out of this is a sense of thankfulness for what we have. A sense of thankfulness that those who have not been affected by COVID do not have it, that they are healthy. A, thank, a sense of thankfulness that thanks to the lockouts and so on and so forth, lockdowns, um, that we managed to connect with our families. And I'm saying all of this in a positive sense. I mean, those who still didn't manage to connect with their families, well, you know, it's time for you to think. So the lockdowns, because everyone suddenly you discovered that, you know, there are other people who live in this house. This is not a hotel. And the other people who live in this house happen to be related to me, like my parents or my, my spouse or my children and so on. So we got connected together. Uh, yes, uh, places of worship, public places of worship, the mosques and so on and so forth were shut down. But that gave us an opportunity to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala together at home. So that again is a beautiful uh, way of uh, bonding together. Uh, as they say, families that pray together, stay together. Families that play together, stay together. So this is, we managed to do uh, both of that. We managed to pray together and we managed to play together. I think this is uh, the, the good thing that happened. Uh, in terms of working from home, uh, when I've been working from home from 1994 onwards. So for me, it's nothing new, but I, but I think for those for whom it was a new experience, yes, it had its, try, its trying moments, but also... Uh, I think it gave us enormous amount of free time. And also it gave us an enormous amount of freedom from having to, especially uh, where I'm living now, uh, which is uh, the northeast of the United States in winter, 
Uh, it uh, saved a lot of us from driving long distances on, uh, on treacherous roads uh, during snowstorms and sleet and so on and so forth. So I think this is a, a beautiful thing that happened. Having said that, on a side note, I must tell you that I'm looking out of my window and I see bright, bright, bright sunlight and not a snowflake in sight. As a matter of fact, I have my uh, bird feeder out and yesterday I filled it. I mean, this, this big feeder. Uh, yesterday I filled it uh, and uh, this morning a whole flock of starlings came and they emptied it. I mean, so this is, uh, this is winter in uh, New England, in Massachusetts uh, and Connecticut in the United States, which is warm. Uh, the temperature outside is now 6 degrees Celsius, which is 4 degrees more than the temperature in New Delhi. Uh, so we are looking at global warming, believe me. And uh, even though from where I am, uh, I am certainly grateful for the fact that I'm not looking at a snow-covered landscape. And I'm not looking at uh, having to drive on a, on a road to sleet, but also I'm looking at the reason why this is happening which is global warming and global warming is very real. So we got to appreciate that. We got to appreciate what's happening. We got to appreciate being together with the family. We got, got to appreciate being together uh, and working from home. So uh, potentially a lot of time saving, uh, potentially a lot of opportunity to do something good. Third one is as far as homeschooling is concerned, parents suddenly discovered that children, the, the raising of children cannot be outsourced to teachers. You can't just take the kid, dump it in the school and forget about him for the next eight hours. It doesn't work like that. The child is yours. You brought it into this world. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala used you as the means. So therefore you have to look after the child. So a lot of people got introduced to homeschooling. Uh, for some of them, uh, maybe rather rudely, but I think it's overall a wonderful thing that happened. Then we had the opportunity, all of us who... Uh, probably said to ourselves and probably said to others that I'm going to uh, to reflect on my life. I'm going to, uh, to, to you know, restructure my life and my, my life strategy, my life goals. Uh, I just need a little bit of time. Well, guess what? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave you that time. As I mentioned in some other lecture, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala asked us this question. Allah said, Fainat al He said, where are you going? And at that time, we didn't have the time to answer Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We said, no, no, I'm very busy. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala brought us to a halt. Bang, khalat. Now tell me where are you going? Meaning that look at your own life and see what you need to do to change that life to become more positive, more effective, uh, and more beneficial to everyone around us. We had the opportunity to do that. Which brings me now, therefore, going forward, what must you do? I want you to use this, this acronym, this C-I-E, right? C-I-E. Um, C stands for compassion. Going forward, I think one of the biggest lessons that this whole thing taught us, and this whole thing meaning COVID-19 being the overall umbrella and all that resulted as from COVID-19. Because through this, we also saw some uh, examples of absolutely heroic uh, human effort to help people. And these were not government. These were all individuals. For example, the amazing effort to help people, the so-called migrant labor in India, uh, people who were abandoned by all the establishment and who walked literally over, in some, in some cases, over 2,000 kilometers. They walked on, on public highways. They died in the process and so on. The way that these people were helped the way that these people were fed, these, they were sheltered, uh, they were helped along by ordinary citizens. It's, a, it's an absolutely classic example of how crisis brings out the best in people. Alhamdulillah. The same thing ha happened here in the United States. Uh, we had example after example of, uh, of people feeding COVID relief, massages, churches, synagogues. Uh, people got together, they created funds. And this continues till date. I'm very happy to report that uh, where they were, where they were and are, they are feeding people who are hungry, who don't have food. Food is, 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 is supplied to them. It's given to them uh, at home on the doorstep. People are delivering uh, parcels to them. Uh, people who needed uh, help with uh, rent, house rent because they had lost jobs. They were given, uh, given assistance. 
uh, people who lost their uh, jobs, they were given financial assistance and so on. So, Alhamdulillah, a lot of work, compassion. So, that's, I think, the first thing that we need to. Now, uh, we showed that, Alhamdulillah, we need to reinforce that. We need to ensure that we don't lose this. So, compassion. Looking at the world with compassion. Because we are going to, we are facing a world now which is going to become uh, much more difficult than it was, even though COVID, we, we hope and we pray that COVID goes away uh, and that, that this whole vaccine and whatever else Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has in, has in store to get rid of it will happen. But we need to be we, to make sure that we learn from this. And the first lesson I uh, learned for myself and I, I promote to you is compassion. The second lesson, which is I, which is innovativeness, meaning that old solutions will not work for new problems. One of the new things that's coming up very rapidly is AI, artificial intelligence. What AI will do to the global landscape, the global business and work landscape is something that can only be imagined. You are seeing some signs of it, you will only see more and more. Many things which are, uh, which are portrayed and presented as conveniences also mean that those things mean loss of job for somebody else. All your tele this, tele that, tele medicine, tele law, tele what not means that somebody lost a job. Now, I'm not saying I'm not against progress. I'm not against efficiency. I'm just saying that remember that somebody has lost a job and that somebody has a family to feed, that somebody has mortgages to pay, they have rent to pay, they have food to put on the table, they have children to look after, pay school fees and so on. And who's going to do that? So we have to find innovative solutions to our problems. The problems of the world coming ahead are not the same. So the same set of solutions, whatever they were, are not going to work. We need new solutions. Number three, the E. C, compassion. I, innovativeness. And E is entrepreneurship. By entrepreneurship, I do not mean only businesses. I mean to take responsibility for yourself. An entrepreneur is the one who says that I am responsible for what happens to me and I'm going to make every effort to ensure that that thing which happens to me is the best thing that could possibly happen to anybody. And an entrepreneur is somebody who takes people with him or her. It's not only about me, doggy dog. No, it's about me and my environment. And my environment consists of my family. It consists of my neighbors. It consists of my society and country. It consists of anyone who comes into contact with me in any way. I must have a positive effect on that people, which means that we shun all exclusivist ideas. We shun all fascist ideas. We shun all extremist ideas. We shun all ideas. We say that I am superior to anybody else on any basis whatsoever. Whether it is color, whether it is gender, whether it is philosophy, whether it is religion, whether it is anything. We are human and in this world, as far as this world is concerned, we are equal in the sight of Allah and we should be equal in, our, in each other's sights. So the, the, the entrepreneurship is to take the world with you. I take the world with me if I'm an entrepreneur. So three things going forward. As I said, we learned uh, patience because patience was forced on us. Uh, we learned to appreciate each other. We learned the value of meeting people because we were forced not to meet people. Believe me, today one of my biggest struggles is not to hug my friends when I see them especially in cases where there is bereavement, where, where there is a funeral. And I cannot hug this person who I love so much, who lost a dear one. And this is a physical, human, psychological need, but we can't do that because of COVID. So it brought home to us the importance of this and we are waiting for the day when we can do that without any problem. So therefore, three things going forward. Compassion, to develop more of that and demonstrate more of that. Number two is innovativeness, new ways of dealing with problems. And number three is entrepreneurship, which is to take responsibility for ourselves and not dump it on the government, not dump it on the external environment, but say, I am responsible for what happens to me and what happens around me. And I will do whatever it takes to ensure that that is positive for me and for everyone around me. 
because there is no way something can be positive to me if it is negative to somebody else. I want to end with that and I want to wish you all a very happy and a very prosperous and safe year going forward and many years to come. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.